Hello, good evening and welcome to Late's Online from the Natural History Museum. I'm Alison, I'm your host for tonight. Now, if you're new to our online events, these events happen on the last Thursday of every month. And they are all about finding creative ways to engage with our museum science and with our scientists. Now, tonight we are mixing science and art. We're inviting you to express your creative sides with our very first Nature Drawing Late. So this is going to be a live draw along session. Over the next hour, we're gonna be recreating an incredible picture of a common octopus with our museum scientist and artist, Lauren Cook. Now, as we draw, we're going to be chatting with Lauren, finding out all about her work, her art, and amongst other things, why we think art and science make perfect partners. Now, as always, we would love to hear from you at home. So don't be shy. Do say hello in the chat. Let us know where you're watching from. And if you've got any questions during our show tonight, do post those in the chat. We'll do our very best to answer your questions as we go along. And if you're enjoying the event, do consider leaving us a small donation. If you're watching us on YouTube, there is a donate button just by the chat, or you can head to our website, nhm.ac.uk forward slash donate. And of course, we absolutely invite you to join us in sketching tonight. I am very, very excited. All you need is just pencil and paper. More on that in, in a second. But let's meet our scientist and our artist for the night. Let's say a big hello to Lauren, Lauren Cook. Hello, hi Alison. Hey. Oh, I'm really, really excited. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm a little bit nervous of my, my very rusty uh, drawing skills, but I'm, I'm looking forward to, to sketching along with you and, and also finding out a little bit more about you and about octopuses as well. Very, yeah. very exciting. <laughs> So, Lauren, before we do get started, let, let's just find out a little bit more about yourself. Tell us first off what you do at the Natural History Museum. Yeah, so um, I'm a PhD student. I started a few months ago in October um, and I'm working on environmental DNA. So um, where you I know, you know, so where you can take a, um, a scoop of water or sediment or anything and um, find out exactly what DNA is in that, that sample and then you can use it to track things and monitor different species so um, I've been so far trying to track the invasive Chinese mitten crab um, which is in the Thames and around uh, the well around the whole world it's invasive um, but yeah hopefully I'll be able to get involved in some other kind of wider ecosystem monitoring things like that so yeah that's me. <laughs> it's a brilliant project and a, and a fascinating technology as well but we are not focusing on your, your uh, PhD research tonight, are we? Because you are also a really, really talented artist and an animator as well. Tell us a little bit about that work. Oh, thanks very much. Um, yes, yeah, so I make, um, I've been making stop frame animations uh, to kind of explain science, a bit of science communication and um, started out, I was just illustrating and then I've, sort of found a way to shoehorn in my love of art into my science by making these um making these animations so uh, stop frames a really fun sort of accessible way to get into animating because all you really need is a camera and a computer um you just need to be able to take photos um and then mash it all together so yeah people of all generations seem to seem to quite like it which is yeah, it's quite a fun, fun thing to do. <laughs> I absolutely love it. I think we've got a, we've got an example haven't we, of one of your animations. I think we can we can play now. So let's take a look. Britain is host to 270 species of bee. And we know that they're extremely important in their ecosystems as pollinators, enabling plants to be fertilized, to reproduce and grow fruits and seeds, providing our food crops and the clean air and oxygen we breathe. But what exactly makes a bee a bee? Well, a bee is a flying insect, closely related to wasps and ants. It has two pairs of wings, a pair of compound eyes, segmented antennae, 
and mouth parts for chewing and sucking up nectar. We are all familiar with honeybees and bumblebees which live in colonies. But did you know that the vast majority of bees in Britain are solitary and some of them make their nests in some fascinating ways? For example, the blue carpenter bee who hibernates through the winter in the hollowed out stem of a bramble bush. Then there's the two coloured mason bee who turns a discarded snail shell into a nest for one of her eggs packs it with nectar and pollen, seals it off from predators and buries the shell under a pyramid of sticks. And who could forget leafcutter bees? The females use circular pieces of leaves to construct little cells to protect each egg within their nests in deadwood or soil. When the eggs hatch, their cells are well provisioned for the larvae as they hibernate over winter. Unfortunately, Bees are under global threat from loss of their habitats, pesticides, climate change and invasive species. Luckily, we can help by making our gardens, flower pots and window boxes more bee friendly. Planting flowers and other plants that bees like, leaving bits of wild garden and putting out bee hotels will create habitats for our bees and for us to enjoy their company. If we protect our bees, we protect our future. Absolutely brilliant. I love that. That was that was one of the first of your animations that I saw. So it, it, it's, it's one of my favourites, but it's just beautiful. How long does it take to produce something like that? Oh, thanks very much. Um, yeah, so that one, I think, took me about two weeks or so, um, 10 days. Yeah, so a bit of a slog. It's mainly um, drawing all of the, doing all the art that takes the longest time. Um, and then after that, it's the filming of it and um, editing and things like that. So, yeah, they, they take a little while. But anything, any um, of the animals or anything that I've drawn already, I tend to save it and use it again. So eventually someone will ask me for an animation. I'll be like, great, I don't need to do anything. I've got every animal on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, Lauren, you're going to um, help us out with some sketching today, aren't you? Um, we, we should give people the lowdown on the activity because what we're going to be doing is, is recreating one of your images. You've drawn for us uh, this fantastic sketch of a, a common octopus uh, that I think we can see here. Yep, brilliant. So, Lauren, you're going to take us through how to recreate this sort of step by step. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, people always say, oh, I can't draw. But um, actually, it's just knowing where to start, I think, is quite a big issue. But yes, yeah, so I'm going to try and show you how to isolate the shapes. And then um, we're just going to add, add in a load of detail and colour it in. So it's just easy, really. Just easy. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> And before we get started, what, what what materials will be will we be using, and what will people who want to join in at home need? Um, so I'll be using just a pencil um, and a rubber is useful because we're going to be doing some shapes and then rubbing them out. Um, and any colouring pencils that you've got. So I'm going to be using these colours, um, kind of oranges and reds. But um, any colour that you've got doesn't matter because, of course, octopus can change colour. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, any anything you've got, you can use. It'll be fine. <laughs> Brilliant. So uh, viewers at home, if you haven't already, now's the time to go and grab those those pencils, those papers, uh, uh, and the, the eraser as well. Very very important. Um, and Lauren, while we're drawing, we're also going to be chatting to you all about your work. We'll be taking any questions uh, from our from our viewers online. We'll also be learning a little bit more about octopuses as well, fascinating creatures. And to help us with that, we're going to be joined by my fantastic colleague, Christina. Christina, are you there? Hello, Alison. Yeah, I'm here. I'm really, really excited. I've got my materials as well ready to see if I can draw a little bit while I chat to you all as well. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, now, just to give people time to grab their materials before we get started, why did we choose an octopus, Lauren? Because that seems, to me, that seems like quite a tricky one. <laughs> um, yes, well, I think everyone loves an octopus, don't they? They're the most intelligent animals of the world. That's not a mammal. I think I'm right in saying that. Um, and of course, they can change colour. So 
if you've only got a blue pencil, you're fine. Um, but also they're just really charismatic, aren't they? And they're nice to draw because they're just so interesting. Yeah, I agree totally. And I love any excuse to talk octopuses as well. So, so I'm particularly looking forward to this one, even if I don't get much drawing done. <laughs> and Christina, one quick question for you before we start. What's the plural of octopus? Is it octopuses or octopi, octopodes? How are we referring to these? So I'm glad that you're asking, Alison, but you've been saying it right uh, throughout the show, is octopuses, which some people find a little bit weird, uh, but we've checked with our scientists, we've checked with our cephalopods experts, and they all agree it's octopuses. It's because it's a mixed word, so it's got Greek, it's got Latin, um, so the easiest way is just adding the ES at the end, so octopuses. Perfect, perfect. That's what we'll use throughout then. Brilliant. Um, and Lauren, do, do people need to recreate our octopus exactly or, or can they, they get a bit creative? Yeah, of course. Get Do whatever you like. You know, their arms or legs and tentacles can go anywhere. So you don't even have to follow exactly what I'm doing. Um, it, the main thing is, you know, the body and then you can do whatever you like. But yeah, any colour, any shape. I'd love to see whatever anyone's producing. So I'd love you to send it in. Absolutely. We, we were going to say, do share your, your finished creations, your drawings with us after the event. You can use the hashtag NHM late so that we can see those drawings. We'll be posting ours as well. I'm, I'm not promising mine's going to be brilliant. Um, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> now, hopefully everyone at home has everything that they need and are, are all ready to go. I've got my my pencil, got my paper. Lauren, are we ready? Yep, looks like yeah. we're ready. Fantastic. Ready Perfect. So what is the best way to, to get started, Lauren? I practiced this um, last week and I ran out of space really, really quickly. So it, it, do we plan it out first? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so um, I... I also tried it quite a few times um, until you work out what the best shapes are to go with. So we're going to go for about the top quarter of your page. Um, I'm using this dimension, but it doesn't really matter. Um, so then we're just going to go for a big circle, basically. So don't be afraid to have a few goes. Um, you keep keeping it quite light is helpful because we're going to rub it out, rubs bits of it out later. So there's my circle. Might make it a little bit bigger. Then, so this the octopus has kind of like an oblong big head. Um, so we're going to try and make it into a lob oblong. If you put a couple of fingers um, at the bottom of the circle at this kind of diagonal and just draw a line slightly far just you know a couple of inches away from it depending on how big your drawing is then we're just going to join these up so if you go from the top of the circle go all the way around to the edge of this to the um, end of this line and then another one to the other end then that is your basic octopus head <laughs> um then to draw this bit of the body it's also kind of like a triangle. So I'm going to start sort of anywhere within in this kind of section here. Draw a line straight down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then another line on the diagonal. Same kind of diagonal as before. Don't be too worried about what this triangle looks like. It can be equilateral or whatever you like. Um, so this is kind of the body. Then it's got two big eyes, the octopus. Um, so we're going to draw a couple more circles. So this one I'm just going to draw at this kind of intersection where all the shapes seem to be overlapping. And then another line, another circle, sorry, for the eye that is in the distance. So it's slightly smaller than the first circle. And don't worry that this all looks quite messy because that's what our rubber's for. Okay. Okay, how are you getting on? I'm getting there. Yeah. I have shapes. <laughs> I've got the shapes. Yeah, can you They're see? It's a bit wonky. Yeah, like that's all good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay, so now um, 
the, the top of this octopus that I'm drawing has a kind of smooth line and almost a bit of a nose. I feel like it's a bit like, um, you know, in the parts of the Caribbean, the big baddie has got like a big nose at the front. Kind of a Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're drawing a little bump here. And then just joining it up to that triangle. And then another one from the back. So we're joining up the big head to the triangle at the back with a kind of curve. Like that. So then that's your basic body. And then all you have to do is add in the legs, which, as I say, can be um, wherever you like. But because we're drawing it from the side, you can't see all eight. So we're, I'm just going to do about five or six today. <laughs> Um, so this first one, I quite like it if it's going up. So I tend to draw a line across the top um, because it kind of reaches just about where the eye is. So I know that my tentacle is going to go right up to around there. Mm -hmm. I come off the body and just draw a big swirl. And don't be too worried about that either. They're very flexible. Um, then just follow that line back round and try and keep about similar distance. Um, as, but then as you go further and further back towards the body, it tends to get a little bit thicker. So then you get a nice thick arm and then it just joins back round. <laughs> then we're gonna okay, get got it. another, so, you can basically start off wherever you like. I'm going to go with this arm. This this one is a bit of a weird one because it's coming towards you, so you've got a bit of um, foreshortening. So follow this round, and then it basically kind of just comes back on itself there. That's it. So this actually makes a lot more sense, this shape, when it's coloured in. But that is all you need to do for that one. Then there's another big swirly tentacle here that comes off. So this one goes back onto the, over the head a bit. So I'm just swirling around. Coming back. There we go. If you're not happy with these swells, the rubber is there. So I've made this one. <laughs> I might make it a bit thicker. Usually when I'm drawing, sometimes I don't even bother rubbing out. I just start a new page. <laughs> so that's <laughs> the good thing about drawing. There's no pressure on it, really. It's just for you. Um, then, yeah, basically, we're just carrying on with this for the moment, getting all these shapes in. So here's another, this uh, tentacle is coming straight towards us. This is basically just like a big oblong. We're going to draw a big oblong here, which comes back onto the body. And then you can see a tiny bit of the arm, the rest of the arm there. Then there's another tentacle. And I feel like the octopus that I've drawn is kind of in a glass box or something, because it's tentacles are going right up at right angles. So... I'm just going to draw a line straight from the body and then it's got this little corner but I mean you don't have to have that if you don't want. Swirl it around and then do the same thing with making the arm a bit thicker as it goes back. And then this other tentacle, the last tentacle we're going to draw, goes Right, it's right at the back, so don't worry about um, crossing over all of your other tentacles because we're going to rub it out. So this this one's just kind of like a big swirl here. And then comes all the way back. And it's quite nice using not being worried about um, crossing over all the lines because then you make sure you, you, don't, you don't start a line and then ends up, it just doesn't make any sense. So... Um, this is our basic octopus shape. So how have you guys done with that? I'm getting there. I'm, I'm <laughs> some of my uh, 
some of my arms are uh, a little bit wonky, but it's starting to look like an octopus. Right. <laughs> Very good. Um, yeah, Thank well, me. I mean, they have wonky arms anyway, really, don't they? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, from here, we're just going to start rubbing out some of these lines so that it makes a bit more sense to our eyes. Mm -hmm. So these original shapes, the circle and the triangle, just going to start rubbing some of those out. So leave the eye because that's in front. We're going to rub out in the middle of the eye and then you're just going to be left with the one at the back. <laughs> about this. Some illustrators like to keep these kind of um, sketches in so that you can still see how they've done the shapes and it gives it quite a nice quality sometimes and you can just kind of put the colour in over the top. Mm -hmm. um, so the head is in front of that arm I think so I'm going to rub that bit out and obviously if you've drawn your arms in any other kind of way then just kind of use your intuition and decide what you think should be in front of something else. So that arm is right at the front. I'm going to rub that out. And this one's at the front too. Obviously, if you want to put eight arms in, then go for it. But I think it only needs five from this angle. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's that's more than enough for me to cope with. <laughs> <laughs> but they are arms, aren't they? I think they are arms. Yeah, Christina, is that right? Then that we don't call them tentacles. Exactly. So these are arms and not tentacles. So arms will have uh, circles, which is something that we'll look at uh, later on when we start drawing them all throughout. And you'll see that in the drawing as well, uh, whereas tentacles only have suckers at the end. So if you think of a squid, which also has arms and tentacles, the squids have the long tentacles with the suckers at the very end um, in the wider bit as well. So, yeah, definitely arms. Weird. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> they are absolutely <laughs> like, amazing. Sometimes they use them like two at the back, don't they? Yeah, yeah, apparently, yeah, they, they have two legs that they favour for, for walking and the other six for, for manipulating objects. So, uh, yeah, yeah, they, they are absolutely amazing animals. And we are, we're going to find out a few more facts about them um, as we go <laughs> along. And just a reminder to our, to our sketchers at home, if you've got any questions at all for Lauren about her work, um, about what she's doing at the moment, um, and if you've got any questions for us about octopuses, um, do post those in the in the chat because we will uh, get to as many of those as we can whilst we're whilst we're sketching whilst we're drawing with Lauren. Um, okay, it's coming together. It's starting to look like an octopus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's not quite as good as yours, but <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure it's great. Well, so whatever it's looking like at the moment, um, when you're happy with the basic outline. You, you can now start adding in all the detail. So they've got all these suckers. And basically, I've just alternated between doing circles, just to, as if it was face on to you, the sucker. And if it's right on the side, sometimes it's good to do. So, you know, like if you were when you were little, you used to draw a castle with um, the kind of walls that I don't know why that they're, they're for defense, aren't they? Or something like that. So yeah. you can, um, you just go make a little square and then join back onto the arm. So that, um, and then they kind of get smaller as they go towards the end of the tentacle of the arm. Um, so yeah, basically you can kind of put them wherever you like. If it's, it makes sense to me that if it's um, on the front of the arm, if it's facing you, then it would be a kind of circle. You could also put a little, um, like you were drawing a cylinder. So um, if it was on the diagonal, you could draw a little uh, more of an oval shape and two lines. And that's kind of like if it was a bit more 3D. Mm -hmm. um, and basically just add these in wherever you see fit. They, yeah, they tend to get a little bit smaller towards the end. Um, a bit bigger towards the body. Um, 
some 3D ones, some of this castle wall thing. And yeah, just kind of add in as much detail as you want. And then we will add the colour in when everyone, it, when we've had a bit of a chance to add in some detail. That is yeah. brilliant. Okay, <laughs> so we'll, we will get adding those, those, those suckers to, to our arms, not tentacles. <laughs> brilliant. And that, uh, Lauren, as as we do this, just uh, just tell us a little bit about about yourself. How, have you always been interested in both both science and art, or did did one come first? I think I sort of have actually. I think I feel like I remember being about five and thinking that I wanted to either be an artist or a vet. So I think I kind of enjoyed <laughs> drawing, um, but have had an interest in animals and um, being outside and things like that. Um, and then um, after school, I decided to do biology, but just tried to keep the art going alongside. So I had friends would kind of give me commissions for pet portraits and things like that. Um, but since I, I, I had a little job um, as a researcher for a documentary company and I kind of realised... I'd rather be doing the kind of this cool stuff than watching it. Um, so I wanted to go back into biology um, into conservation research. Um, and I've just managed to find a way to get my art in basically just with, with doing all of these um, stop motions. So yeah, I'm, I feel like I've hit the jackpot at the moment because I'm, I'm managing to do both. <laughs> Maybe spreading myself too thin, who knows? But it's working for me at the moment. You're you're combining them absolutely brilliantly because we we tend to think of uh, we tend to see science and art as as two very different very separate disciplines, don't we? But they are they have a lot in common. For, for you, how are, how are science and art linked? Do you does does your science influence your influence your art and vice versa? Yeah, I think probably the science influenced the art in a more obvious way because nature is such a great inspiration. Um, for many people's drawing because it's just so beautiful you don't need to do anything with it um, and I've been trying to use the art to raise awareness for uh, different conservation issues or as a teaching tool so um, but it also does influence my science a bit so I'm, I'm hoping to do a, kind of like a citizen science project at some point during my PhD um, because I've kind of I want to use these skills and hopefully I can get people involved in um, contributing and sending in some samples and things. So, um, yeah, it kind of does both, I reckon. <laughs> But yeah, though you also find a lot of people, a lot of scientists who are interested in art and a lot of artists who are interested in science. So it's quite mm. interesting because they're taught so separately at school. But actually, it's similar personality type, I think, who um, goes into one of these jobs because it's kind of like the attention to attention to detail is quite a good skill to have. Um, and it's just a way to explore your environment. Um so yeah, I think maybe they should start being meshed. Definitely, definitely. And I mean, you 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 shown with your with your animations that, I mean, art can be a fantastic way to to communicate science to communicate that some of these com complicated concepts. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, definitely, it's 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 a fantastic tool, and I think yeah, they they absolutely influence one another. Um, we've got a few questions coming in about octopuses, so so let's take a couple of those from uh, from our viewers. So Christina, we've got uh, quite a few. So uh, so we have Della asking what octopuses like to eat. So I think there are so many octopuses around in our sea. So different octopuses will eat different things, um, but things that they like to eat are um, shellfish and um, clams crabs, things that they can actually munch. They will also eat fish. They may even eat all the um, cephalopods like squid and other octopuses. Um, so yeah, a varied type, but they are, uh, they, yeah, they will eat different things from, from the sea, depending on the size as well. So bigger octopuses will be able to uh, catch bigger prey and the smaller octopuses will have to find smaller things. But they have a beak uh, in between the tentacles that they can use to munch and break uh, those those shells or um, external skeleton that some of those animals might have. Yeah, absolutely. And they've got um, they have venom, don't they? Which a lot of people don't don't realise that pretty much. I think it, it, it's all octopuses. We think um, 
but they they have venom in their in their saliva to subdue their their prey, don't they? Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's a venom that in general uh, it can't it doesn't affect humans that much, or it it doesn't it doesn't damage that. But there's one particular octopus, the uh, blue ring octopus, which you can see in, on the screen at the moment. He's very very venomous. He has uh, something called a tetrodotoxin, which is in the in blowfish and another very very uh, venomous animals, um, and that one is is a very dangerous one. If you ever see one, don't handle it, don't touch it. There's been some pictures of people uh, actually picking them up, and the thing is, when they uh, when they bite you, when they pinch at you, you won't really feel it, um, but then you will get the venom, and, and you have to react really quickly because otherwise it could it could really kill you. Yeah, they're beautiful little things, very enticing, but absolutely deadly. Um, yeah, <laughs> look, but don't touch. Yeah, <laughs> Alison, we we had a, an actual, um, a question regarding that. How do they eat the shell the shellfish? Would they open them or crack them? And the thing is, octopuses are really clever. I think we've mentioned it before. We had a question mm. about. Are they really intelligent? They are really intelligent. We don't know if they are the most intelligent animal. Intelligence is something so difficult to actually um, measure in any way. Uh, but they can do different things. They can open objects, so they can open uh, shells. They've got a lot of strength on the tentacle. The suckers are really, really um, good for cracking things open. They can even, um, with the suckers, they can even uh, fold them and, and use them to pinch as well. So yeah they would definitely open things and they would even use shells to hide and to protect themselves as armor so going back to that uh, intelligence question they are really clever they solve tricks they solve puzzles they uh, escape from maces as well as um in experiment scientists had done with them um but yeah they, they have all these quirks as well i remember reading uh, a story about a i think it was an octopus in a in a lab and the, they noticed the fish were going in and other tanks were going missing in this lab and they they couldn't work out there was no sign of where this fish were going so they set up a camera and it was it was an octopus in one of the tanks getting out of their, their tank getting into the fish tank eating the fish hiding hiding the remains <laughs> and getting back into their tank yeah <laughs> they are crafty really really crafty amazing amazing animals that's amazing they would also <laughs> like and dislike people. Uh, so in uh, octopuses that live in aquariums, there's been a couple of cases where they will like some people, some of the carers, and some of the carers, they weren't like them. So there was quit water at them and <laughs> not be friendly with them at all. So yeah, there you go. So they, they, they have their feelings. <laughs> <laughs> They're definitely charismatic animals. I think, yeah, I could see easily how people that, that yeah, that, that work with octopuses can can form an attachment with them because they are they 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 are they almost appear to have personalities although obviously we we you know we have to be careful with, with things like that but um, yeah. but regardless they are amazing animals and those suckers that we are very busily drawing at the moment <laughs> they are um, they're not just for, for manipulating things are they they've they've got sort of chemo receptors they're super super sensitive so they can effectively taste. Is it almost with the suckers? Is that right? Yeah, uh, that's true. So they have this ability to taste what's going on in the water. They are quite sensitive as well, so they can taste the different chemicals um, in the waters with them. So yeah, it's not only for grabbing or as suckers themselves, they use them for many different things. And the thing is, so um, octopuses, this is quite, um, this is quite one of the quirks that I, I, they have that I really, really love. They uh, don't have just one brain they have the main brain and kind of like pseudo brains or, or smaller brains um along the tentacle so they have um the sorry not tentacle the arms so in their a arms they would have one kind of a brain around that and that helps them uh get the the arms and the suckers to react differently and faster rather than having to send all the information that they receive into the main brain they just send it to the to the arm brain and they can move independently and react quickly to what's going on around them so yeah it just they're fascinating animals they just <laughs> i wish i had arm brain i know yeah. that'd be really handy for your art wouldn't it very useful. <laughs> <laughs> i'm just gonna pop the eye in by the way this is just oh, great. A, um 
another smaller circle is just sort of nearer the top of this one um, that's facing us. So, yeah, that's it. And they've got rectangular pupils. So just going to draw it. And because it's on a curve, it's just got a tiny little curve there. And that's it, basically. So there's your outline and all the details. <laughs> and then you just have to start colouring. Um, so grab your pencils, whatever, whatever colour, whatever colours you've got. Um, I tend to like to put in the light bits first, but it's totally subjective. Um, one technique, I don't know if I'm the only person who does this, but I kind of like blur my eyes and I can see where all the yellow bits are. Um, they kind of, you can just try and jump out where to start putting some colour in. So I can see a bit of colour, a bit of yellow at the back of the head here. I'm just going to start scribbling it in. And what I like to do with colouring pencils is kind of layer them up. So um, these ones, they're just they're just called Furbies. They're quite soft and you can kind of blend them a bit, a little bit like oil pastels, but not quite as messy. Um, so there's also a big yellow patch at the top. Well, obviously, whatever colour you're using, you can do what you like. Um, there's a big yellow patch here. Um, I quite I like to make things really colourful, um, but you can just do this in all one colour and just shade it. Just think about where the light might be coming from. So I'm I'm thinking that my light source is coming from the top right hand corner. So I'm just going to draw this arrow in there to just remind me where my light's coming from. And I'm just going to try and leave these bits a bit lighter and the bits further away from it a bit darker. Um, and a good tip that my art teacher taught me is to make the light bits as light as you can, the dark bits as dark as you can. Um, and that kind of, because um, Alison, you were saying you, you might start drawing something and you think, oh, it's a little bit flat. Um, but if you, if you have this contrast of light and dark, it can make things look a lot less flat. So that is my tip from my school art teacher. <laughs> yeah, that is always a bit I struggle with. I mean, I mean, I, I haven't done a lot of sketching. I, I loved art when I was younger, but I sort of gave it up. Um, so, mm. yeah, I hadn't really done. I did a little bit of sketching when, when we first went into lockdown. But, yeah, everything I did just seemed so flat and lifeless because I've forgotten right. everything, how to do everything, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this is this is really, really useful. I'm nervous of adding colour because I feel like I'm going to mess it up. Um, but I'm just going to go for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, go for it. You can always do it again. Yeah, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah, doesn't matter. <laughs> We've had a lot of comments uh, from people on Facebook and YouTube that are watching that saying that this is inspiring them a lot to draw. And I think that's really important when, when drawing, isn't it? To get Absolutely. inspired, just get doing it. Um, yeah. And yeah, exactly. Um, a lot of a lot of people think, oh, I'm not good at art, or I'm I'm I was never, I can't do it. It's just not in my talent or whatever. But um, even I do art all the time now, and if I don't do it for a while, I completely lose the skill, and I'll start drawing something. And I think, oh my god, I just can't get these shapes right. It's just, it really is something that you need to practice. Um, but also, yeah, I just just think there's no pressure on it. It's only you. If if you don't like it, chuck it. Start again. Have ten goes until you you like something that you're doing. And um, yeah, there's no pressure. Basically, that's what I would say to my art friends. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> now, Alison, we also had a couple of questions about mating. Um, ah. Interesting, because octopuses are quite interesting in terms of of mating. Um, so we have Callum asking, how do they mate? And we had another question as well, uh, just before about, uh, they were asking, I, I've read that uh, the body de de degenerates after birth. And it's actually a nice story about this. So um, octopus parents and the female uh, in particular, which will lay eggs, will look after the eggs while the, the eggs hatch and they won't leave the side of the eggs so the what happens with with them is that then they don't eat so when the eggs finally hatch the parent let go because it hasn't been eating at all so it finally can die and then let the the little ones 
uh, it's that uh, leaving away, but it's because they look after them and they don't eat, they don't, uh, they don't go away from their eggs at all while they're looking after them. And uh, mm. this black octopus that actually uh, looks like a lot like a nautilus is the, um, um, I think it's called the nautilus octopus. It's actually an octopus, and the female has a shell. The paper octopus, they has a shell that she lays the eggs in, and she just swims around with it. Uh, and that's a bit easy. And that's how they use the the arms. We were talking about that later. Yeah, they um, yeah, they they have quite short lives. Most octopuses, don't they? So they, I mean, it varies depending on the octopus, but it's it's it can vary from months to only a, about five years for some of the bigger species. Uh, we're not. I don't think we're very sure about the deep sea species of octopus. Some of those mm -hmm. might live a bit longer, but certainly those that uh, are in the more shallow waters. And yeah, it, it's a it it is just a. a strategy basically it's it's a way of living they they live fast they they die young and they produce lots and lots of off, offspring it's and yeah once they they mate they mate once and then their, their bodies deteriorate and it seems really really sad yeah but, that's sad. yeah it, it's 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 the strategy that they've evolved um so yeah and it works for them <laughs> lots of octopus in the, in the ocean mm -hmm. brilliant that's absolutely right I'm just going to show you a little um, little technique just while we're colouring. Just something that, um, to because the octopus has um, the amazing papilla, you know, the, all the texture. So to give it a little bit of texture, they kind of make it look a bit bumpy. I just, if you want to just draw some kind of circles or just like scribbles, honestly, these ten, this is how I did my other one. I just scribbled on. They don't even have to be circles. They can be like more jagged shapes that kind of thing um you can if you want to put a little a different color on don't worry about all of this um all of these scribbles because what why i said that we needed a white pencil was because you can blend coloring pencils with a white pencil and if you press quite hard then you get kind of a different quality of color and you can do you can press if you press hard with any color it kind of fills in all of these white holes because you the paper's a little bit textured and it just makes it look a bit more smooth so that's basically how you would do the whole thing and maybe after we can all finish them because <laughs> it might take a little bit of time but yeah just do that with the whole body and bobs your ankle <laughs> oh that that's brilliant that's a really really good tip because i imagine we're, we're not all going to finish our, our drawings tonight but we can carry on afterwards and yeah we would we would love to see what everyone everyone's done so yeah absolutely um <laughs> fantastic and just uh you you mentioned the the octopus eye earlier they've got that amazing kind of rectangular pupil uh christina their eyesight is really good isn't it uh octopuses generally it is. We are not sure still about it. We used to, scientists used to think that they were actually colorblind, but that was a bit of an issue because not only they can, uh, so they, they, they thought they could see very well, but then they thought, oh, they're colorblind. And the issue with that was that octopuses actually can change color and can they, they can um, adapt to the surroundings and actually uh, mimic the colors of the surrounding to then hide um, and camouflage really, really well. So that was a little bit of, of an issue. So if they were colorblind, how could they imitate the colors uh, around them so, so well? So you can see one of them camouflaging there. Not only they imitate the, co the colors, they also uh, create the textures of the, of the objects and the things around them. Um, so that that was a thing that was puzzling scientists, and what the scientists think now they still haven't confirmed it is that they are not color blind, but they don't have the same system that we have to see color. So instead of having cells that react to different wavelengths, what they think is that they have some uh, the structure of the um, pupils can the way it reflects light can't tell them the color that they are seeing, even though they don't have the same the other structures that that we have um, and they can do that with the skin somehow they might have similar structure as well in the skin so they are really quick and change of color like mm. you in, in that video 
Yeah, because they definitely have light sensing cells in their skin as well, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, so yeah, f absolutely fascinating animals. I, I mean, I could talk about octopuses all day. <laughs> 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 um, I am really loving this this drawing and getting loads of the good tips from Lauren. Lauren, <laughs> are you working on any um, projects at the moment? Any more animations? Um, so I've just finished two. Um, one of them comes out tomorrow, hopefully, um, about urban wildlife and how we can protect it. So that was quite good fun. I got to draw a he hedgehog and a woodlouse and things like that. Um, it's quite fun when you have a little challenge like that, because I was trying to think, oh, how am I going to make this hedgehog roll up into a ball? And so uh, the moving part is quite fun. Um, but then, yeah, a couple more in the pipeline over the summer. Um, and yeah, as and when, when I've got presentations for my PhD and things like that, I can uh, just, if I've got time, try and do things like that. Um, but it's nice to do them for other people, and for uh, wildlife organisations and things like that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I've got lots to do. Good busy. Uh, absolutely. Um, I know you, you did an animation for us for the museum, didn't you, about uh, explaining what environmental DNA is. But when you when you uh, your PhD research, will you will you represent that in in animation form? Will you present it in yeah, animation form? I think so. I mean, I even used that animation in one of my talks. To I thought, you know what? I've already explained this, so I'm just going to press play on my <laughs> on my animation. Um, yeah, I'll I would love to do one for my PhD projects. I've done a little one on the Chinese mitten crab. Um, which has just been quite useful for talks um, and there's no pressure on them to look very nice if they're just for myself so I can just kind of bash them out quite quickly but yeah it's quite fun. <laughs> <laughs> We've actually had a question just come in uh, for you Lauren from, from uh, Catherine asking uh, what your production process is when making the animation would you first do a storyboard and write a script or do you just start drawing and see where it takes you? Yeah, it's a really good question. Catherine, yeah, um, exactly right. So I usually um, I will get kind of a brief, which is quite broad sometimes. And so I'll do a lot of research and write a script and then send it back to the people and um, make sure that it's fact checked at the beginning before I start going down a tangent that's completely wrong. Um, and then, yeah, do a storyboard um, and I make a big list of drawings that I will need to do. And then I just kind of crack on with it. Um, and I tend to, so I, I'll draw it, um, you know, in my sketchbook and paint it. And then I'll take a picture of it and put it into Photoshop. Um, and then I can change the size of it or the colour or so I, if I could draw this octopus, but I think in my animation, it needs to be much smaller. So um, and it needs to be pink. Um, so it's really useful for that kind of thing. Um, and then, yeah, it's just uh, taking a photo, moving the object slightly, taking another photo, moving the object slightly and just do that about 800 times. <laughs> <laughs> And then add in your voiceover and uh, all of the music and everything um, in some kind of editing program. So yeah, that's that's the process. It's quite lengthy. <laughs> it is, but it's it's absolutely brilliant, and it's it's well worth it. Um, we are going to rapidly run out of time. We've got about five minutes left for for our drawing, Lauren. So are there any um, additional tips that you can give anyone for for any tips for drawing this? Specific octopus that we yeah, can take so away with us. I would say the last thing that I would say, I've just started in adding a little bit of black. Um, just give go over your pencil lines and give them an out outline. So when you when you're happy with it, and just start out adding in where you think there should be a shadow. So think about this um, light source coming in. So I'm going to put some shadows in on this kind of side. Um, and yeah, I'd love to see what everyone has drawn. I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait either. Um, I'm, I'm slightly nervous of, of showing showing my drawing because it doesn't look quite like yours, Lauren. But hopefully, eventually, it will do. Um, it's is um, scientific accuracy important for you when you're doing your your art and your animation? So, so. Yeah, it really is in the animations, especially if you're doing it for a wildlife um, organisation. Though, make sure 
oh okay you have to definitely say it's the blue carpenter p carpenter b not just a carpenter b um and sometimes i'll get the number slightly wrong and something and i'll lose sleep thinking oh my god i've told everyone there's 270 species of bee and there's actually only 265 oh, i just <laughs> so yeah it's got to be really um it makes sure that it's all correct which is why the fact checking is really useful <laughs> brilliant oh uh, we've had a lovely comment from joseph saying that def can definitely see you as the next face of spring watch i can as well <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. um and uh at lauren um alex uh has asked what program you use to make your stop motion animation um i use final cut pro um i used to use imovie which is a free one which does most of the same things um but a final cut just gives you a bit more flexibility if you're going to add in you know other uh, effects and things but iMovie is great if you're just starting out and you don't want to invest yeah good tip there Alex <laughs> <laughs> thanks Alex <laughs> and Henrietta saying that uh, this uh, it, it's the best octopus that she uh, that, that they've ever drawn so so thank you very much Lauren that's that's brilliant I have to say this is probably the best octopus I've ever drawn as well <laughs> <laughs> no, that I've drawn very many. <laughs> yeah, this will be the start of many. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and it's really just, tricky. It is really tricky, but I, the the arms particularly, I haven't quite got all my uh, my suckers in either. But I, I will I will carry on with that. Um, and just in the last couple of minutes, Christina, any final octopus facts that you you want to share with everyone? Well, I think we've shared the the main ones that um, we have. Um, that we know about them. They are really, really amazing. Um, they are really, really amazing uh, animals. We had a couple of questions about uh, octopus in the UK. Um, and I think it's worth saying that um, the common octopus, which is a very, very common octopus, as, as its name says, is found in UK in UK um, waters. Uh, and then there are some other octopuses that you can uh, find in the Northern Sea as well. Um, and yeah they are they are they are really cool animals if you get to see them i would i would say what i would say is really important is to always uh let them be if you see them in their habitat just look at them maybe do a quick sketch at them uh, and then let them be and observe them because they are really really amazing to to look at and and observe and see what they do how they move and and so on not so much a fact but really really uh cool species really cool animals yeah definitely i that I, I think they're wonderful animals and uh, yeah so many interesting things about them look them up um we've got some fantastic um talks from some of our, our scientists on online uh about octopuses we've got our, our um, curator john abler also our, our curator of fossil kef kephalopods so huge it's fantastic there's some lovely uh, online talks that they've done all about um kephalopods and octopuses um so i would i'd recommend looking those up um, but we are almost out of time, guys. Are we, Christina? Have you have you made any progress? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's not as nice as Lauren. No, I was I'm going to say it. Share it. Mine's not either. <laughs> it's got the colour. Amazing. The there you that go. is that's really good. Something like that. <laughs> Christina. Oh my god. That's so really I, I'm not going to lie. I practice it a bit. How about you, Alison? How is yours? Oh, mine's nowhere near as good as that. Um, well, you um, were presenting, weren't you? That's really cool. <laughs> it's yeah, it, it it's it is probably the best octopus I've drawn. That is brilliant. <laughs> the shading is um, amazing in there. I don't yeah. know why you asked me to do this. You guys could have just done it. <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> Christina is, is quite a good artist, but me not so much. But I I am absolutely gonna continue to, to add to this drawing we've got the the reference drawing haven't we that you did lauren on our website it's also up on social media i think as well um, and we would absolutely encourage all of you to carry on with with your drawings please please share them with us as well once i've i've done a bit more to mine i'm going to share mine over social media use the hashtag nhm hashtag nhm late and we'll be able to see them we would love to see what you've done um, it's it's been really 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 fun tonight if you want to see more of lauren's fantastic work they can follow you on instagram is that right lauren 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on Instagram. Um, it's Lauren's Lauren's underscore colours. Um, yeah, Lauren. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. We'll, uh, we'll 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 hopefully post that in the chat. Um, so yeah, do do follow uh, Lauren on Instagram. You can see more of her amazing artwork and her animations as well. There, and there's some uh, there's a couple, there's one at least animation that Lauren's done on our website as well. So so have a look at that. But thank you so much, Lauren. I have really loved this. It's been brilliant fun. I've learnt loads, and we've we've created something beautiful as well. So it's 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 been a good night. Yes. <laughs> so much fun thank you so much thank you <laughs> thank you so much Lauren and also thank you to you Christina for, for monitoring those questions and for all of those fantastic octopus facts as well it's been really really brilliant it was really fun Alison thank you we'll say good night to, to both of you for now and thank you so much to to you our viewers for joining in tonight I hope that you enjoyed that as much as I did if you enjoyed the, the show, do consider leaving us a small donation. Again, you can go to our website, nhm.ac.uk forward slash donate. Or you're, if you're on YouTube, there is the, the donate button just there. Any donation, no matter how small, uh, we would really, really appreciate it. And if you would like more drawing inspiration, the museum has started up its Nature Drawing Club again. This was something we started uh, during the first lockdown. We've been asking you to, to draw um, on a particular theme and again, share your drawings over social media. Check out our website, check out our social media feeds. The current theme, I believe, is spring. We're encouraging you to draw signs of spring. So, so do join in with that if you would like to. And we will, of course, be back next month with another late. So hopefully you'll all join us again. But for now, we'll say good night.